Hello Internet, welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program with me, Syriac. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I wanted to do a quick thing, I know I said I wouldn't start off with this in the next video, but I uh, feel obligated to. Something weird happened, I was doing a test run of a ship that, by the way, failed. Um, Bill happened to be the pilot, I guess Jeb was otherwise occupied or something, but Bill was the pilot, he just kind of was auto-slotted in there. And the mission went pretty well, and it the rocket was designed to break into several pieces when it got back, and each of those pieces would also open chutes and, and then come down, and I could recover them separately, or so was the plan. And um, I was able to recover the vessel, but Bill wasn't in it. So Bill's gone. Now, he didn't die, and I'll show you in a second, but when it recovered, it gave me science f just for the fact that it recovered a vessel that was above the uh, orbiting Kerbin, so I did, I, I think I got like 10, 10 science, something like that, and that was just enough to give me um, the 90 or so that I needed to unlock the... Uh, advanced construction and that unlocked docking ports which I've been wanting to get so now I know where those are at least or at least some of them so I can get the the uh, docking ports um, grabbing unit I think that's for the asteroids and I don't, I don't know that I want to do that right now I don't know that there's a whole whopping amount of science there um, and I believe this was already an option so that's really all it did uh, the parts that it gave me. Uh, this first part is from a mod, so that's nothing. Uh, I think I went over this already, but it gave me the uh, uh, the smallest size of the Rockamax, I believe. That's the smallest one uh, of the liquid fuel. A structural fuselage with no fuel in it. Rockamax decoupler. Uh, Rockamax adapter. Another adapter. Uh, and uh, the hydraulic detachment manifolds. Uh, that basically just slough off the stuff rather than ejecting at 450. I don't care what that says. <laughs> but uh, anyway, let me let me leave this area here and take you over to to here. So I've got got some applicants that want to uh, to come and it, and here are the ones that I've already put in here. I don't know if I actually shown these. I've got Jeb. He's in there, and Bob. No Bill. But I do have uh, Loadless. I think I brought him in because um, he's extremely stupid. And I thought I, I could use him on a mission that no one else might take. Nah, and then I'm going to put this guy in some sort of science facility. I, don't, I know it doesn't matter, but I just like the fact that he has zero zil zip <laughs> for stupidity. He seems to be extremely smart, or at least doesn't make dumb mistakes. And he's very courageous. He's probably the best one I've ever seen. And then we got Ray Ray Kerman kinda <laughs> up there with Jeb, even more so than Jeb, more courageous but also more stupid. And then we got Enki Kerman who, or I think that's, yeah, NK or Enki Kerman. Not very courageous and particularly stupid, so <laughs> this guy's gonna be our, he's gonna be fun, <laughs> I think. Um, looks like some of these uh, some of these have filled in since I since I hired these guys. But anyway, assigned to missions, nobody, and then lost, missing in action. I don't know what it says when they die. I've never actually looked, but that seems to be fitting. I have no idea where he went. Um, and I I went and I looked in the tracking facility for debris even, and I went and I looked at all the debris to see if any of that was his ship and. Nope. So I've been working on some uh, some new designs for a few missions, and I've decided I wanna I wanna do rather than fly towards a planet, land on a planet, fly towards a la planet, land on a planet, or even just any astronomical body. Why is this up? Get out of here. Anyway, uh, rather than do that, what I wanted to do was. Um, do several smaller missions, uh, some probes here and there, and also I'm thinking if I do a quick little peek into um, 
a solar orbit, I could get a decent amount of uh, stuff. So I've I've got some some stuff here. I got an atmospheric probe launcher in case I want to go towards any planet like Duna or Eve uh, that has an atmosphere. That'll work. Uh, I've got the Bob SPF 420. That's going to be my solar orbiter. Um, and then non-atmospheric probe launcher, and, uh, as the name suggests, it very it's good at landing in places with no atmosphere, and repeatedly landing. Like it can take off from one, fly to another. This one is pretty efficient. I like it. So I got I got some some options. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do as of yet, but I'm I'm going to record this one a little early, um, and then maybe edit this into the next video next video I actually do record so uh, as of right now I don't know what I'm gonna do but you'll find out in mere moments so uh, I guess I'll be right back no matter how long it takes me to come back you'll see me in a sec welcome back to the VAB I have a new flag Syriac Gaming KSP um, the background image I got off of a free site. I was still looking for the artist to try and credit them. So if anyone knows who it is, please tell me so I can credit them. And if not, and sorry. <laughs> um, so, I had some things happen since we last encountered one another. Um, I made an entire mission where using this ship and its lifter the Bob SPF 4200 rather than the 420 I mentioned earlier and basically all I did was stack another science junior on there along with the uh, parts that come with it put a few but a few more batteries on it and uh, that's basically it for the top part and everything else was just to get me to a solar orbit and uh, I did I got into solar orbit with Ray Ray Kerman good old Ray Ray here and I got a good amount of science while I was there and then I re-entered Kerbin's sphere of influence and intersected with the moon, kind of buzzed it at 13,000 uh, meters above, and hopped out on EVA a couple times and gathered, I believe, 24 science each time I did that at, at the moon's highlands and midlands or craters or some other thing. And then I made it all the way back and I made it through reentry, got down, landed fine, got five or six more science with the piddly things that are still allowed, still left in the Kerbin sphere of influence. Landed it, got out, spent the science, saved the video, went back, reviewed it, looked cool, put it in my uh, converter, and it ate it. Gone. So... I will now show you what it is I achieved, <laughs> but uh, I can tell you specifically um, that mission netted me, I believe it was 650 something science, maybe a little bit more, which was awesome. And I will take you over and show you what I unlocked with that. Um, <laughs> seems to be the episode of, of uh, stuff going wrong. So. Let's see, I believe the first thing I did was I came here to get this Clampatron docking port. So I got the specialized construction mainly just to get that. I mean, it did open up some other stuff, some adapters, girders, and shielded docking ports and things like that, but all I really wanted was that. And that gives access to uh, Clampatron Jr., bunch of separators, a quad coupler, and a radial attachment point along with a girder. The heavy drill unit is from the Cathane mod and I'm not doing that so no worries about that right now. Uh, then I came down here and I decided my next missions I wanted to use probes and I was going to send those to 
Eve and to Duna and basically attempt a landing on them, see what it was like, take temperature readings, and so forth. So I said, wait a minute, I could also do barometric pressure there because they have atmospheres. So I chose this as my next one, which unlocked da -da -da, rover stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm pretty excited about that part. I like that. Um, and it came down to a decision between these rover parts and this, the electronics, where uh, this is again a Cathayan thing, so I'm going to ignore that. A faster um, and more energy usage antenna, and a, another piece of science equipment, the si double C seismic accelerometer. So I unlocked two things that I can get science with that I know of here. Oh, and by the way, on, on when I chose this, it opened up um, a generator and battery banks, as well as the negative gravioli detector and a computing nose cone. I don't actually know if the nose cone does anything. Um, it says it can collect atmospheric data while in flight, so I don't know if you get extra science if you bring it back after a flight, or if you right click it to do things like the other ones I have never used it so maybe we'll try that at some point so anyway after all that I still had about 100 science left so I backtracked down to here and I realized oh there's a little, little, little uh, probe core in there because I I noticed you, you can't put anything on top of the stay putnik or stay put, putnik here and um, this you can put things on top, sides, bottom, doesn't matter. You can have it right in the middle of your probe if you want to. So I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know if I plan on redesigning the probes I've already got ready for the mission besides adding the ability to do more science on those missions, which is awesome. Uh, so the plan is to send a probe to Eve, a probe to Duna, and uh, do a bunch of science. <laughs> um, those would, those would be the two atmospheric probes, but I have a couple non-atmospheric probes too, and I kind of wanted to send those to uh, Ike and Gilly, which are the moon around Duna and the moon around Eve. I hope I have that right. Um, I, th I think I can look here, actually. Yeah. I, did I have that backwards? Wait, where's Eve? Eve has Gilly, and Duna has Ike. And... Um, there's no atmospheres on those moons. Gilly's actually tiny and uh, might actually be able to do something at Gilly and then maybe buzz by Eve or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, yeah. So that that seems like it's going to be the end of kind of my tier one adventures. You know, like where I'm still using the uh, the regular sized. Um, rockets and things. I might have to change a few things around, maybe get um, some larger fuel tanks and boosters and things. And then I can... Um, then I will be able to do some things with my science bay that I have, or the processing lab that I have have plans for. So this video, I guess I'm going to try and keep it a little bit short here. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna actually have any footage in this. It's basically gonna be me telling you about all the footage you missed. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, I think I know what happened, and I have two video capture pro um, things, and they record with different codecs, I believe. And don't quote me on any of this because I have no idea. It's all magic and witchcraft to me, but. Um, I'm pretty sure that when I ran, I ran it through the wrong um, converter, like I converted it to a format it didn't need to go to, or something along the way, and I lost the audio or the video. So I, so, sorry, <laughs> it's my fault on that one. It was, it's not a software error like the previous one or hardware error or whatever it was. Um, that was totally me. So I just got to pay more attention, take take some more tests videos before I actually sit down. I was I was excited. I wanted to show you guys this stuff and then I ended up not being able to show you anything. So 
Very sorry about that, but you didn't really miss too much, to be honest. I, I just burned prograde. Um, <laughs> that's basically what I did, is I burned um, prograde in the uh, in the direction that Kerbin is traveling. I went opposite, so I went retrograde to Kerbin, which tossed me out of Kerbin's sphere of influence and into a solar sphere sphere of influence. I did uh, one or two science experiments because the thermometers don't work there and uh, one EVA, one crew report and uh, orbited about halfway through and then or one time around maybe, I'm not sure, but basically sped right back up again and then uh, was caught back in Kerbin's sphere of influence, uh, buzzed by the moon, which was kind of fun. That was, but we get, we get to do that. I've done it once already in an earlier episode, but um, buzzed by, and while I went by the moon, I, I went on EVA and did a few more um, biome science, uh, biome related science EVAs, and uh, yeah, then we just burned retro got caught in uh, Kerbin sphere of influence and just kept burning until I got back I had a lot of fuel left I really like that lander even with the extra science junior on it it had tons of fuel so um, I'm thinking we could do we could just slap that on top of the tier 2 stuff later and still be able to go do stuff in the outer planets and maybe uh, if I ever do get to nuclear rockets at some point I'm assuming they're in here somewhere um, yeah I think they're in there somewhere. I'd like to maybe get something like that. And I also want to use this at some point, the lander can. It's one of my favorite ones. Um, so, yeah. I'm rambling again, and nothing to see here, people. <laughs> Move along. Um, I'm going to end the video by going back to my, my flag. That I, I, do, I do like it. I like my flag. So that'll be on the side of my ship's for now and uh, thanks for watching this and I do plan on putting another video out as soon as I can and it should be pretty quick I've got most of the stuff built so I'll try and make it up to you guys and uh, appreciate you sticking through all the hard times here <laughs> learning learning experience for for me so um, thanks for watching and uh, have fun out there